Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. 19 years gone in one conversation with update. My 46 male wife, 48 female of 19 years, told me about her friend setting her up on a blind date. She had a girl's night out with her friend T. T set her up apparently with a guy that she had slept with a few weeks earlier. T was hooking up with someone else and set my wife up with the past hookup. My wife went out at 7 p.m. and came home at 3 a.m. that night. The confession came completely out of the blue. She said she was sorry, wants to work on her marriage, waterworks, begging forgiveness. She said that nothing happened between her and the guy because T had slept with him. She knew agreeing to meeting this guy was wrong and going to meet him was even worse. I don't believe that nothing happened like she is saying. She also said that the guy works at a sawmill and you make more money. That's why I'm the better option. Basically, she was confessing to actively trying to replace me. If she could find someone with a better paying job, this post would be much different. Not long after this girl's night out and before the confession, my wife and T had a total meltdown of their friendship. Suddenly, they went from best friends to T is a liar and a manipulative, jealous person, according to my wife. I think the confession, or partial confession, was to keep T from telling me about her sleeping with the guy, gaslighting me on the truth of what really happened by telling me only partially about it. Only enough to look bad, but not the whole ugly truth of what happened. Honestly, I didn't need to be told everything that happened. Her story didn't add up. The holes in the story were too big. Little coincidences that occurred around this time put everything into perfect focus. What she told me about it, I lost all feeling for her. I just went numb. Didn't even get angry. I'm done. Just working on my exit strategy at this point. Getting financials in order, place to move into, etc. It really sucks that she would be willing to throw away 19 years of marriage with no regard for anything, including her two children. Update. Sorry in advance, this is a long one. A lot has happened since my first post. She's in full-blown panic mode. Recently diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder where her white blood cells are attacking her lungs. This causes asthma attacks that normal medication can't correct. The only drug in the market that controls the condition has a copay of 13 grand after her Medicaid. If I didn't have really good health insurance through my employment, there isn't any possibility of her being able to afford it. She's trying everything to reconcile, even setting up couples counseling. We made it through two and a half sessions. Explains why she came clean on partial truth and wants to fix things. Counseling went the way I figured it would. Every session was all about everything I had done wrong, ever. Including my working 50 hours each week to make ends meet because she has partial disability and doesn't work. I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Everything was brought up, including our two children. Well, except I was informed that the mention of her date night was off limits. About halfway through the third session, the counselor looked her in the eye and asked, If you have such a high power radar to detect what everyone else is doing wrong, Point that radar at yourself and tell me what you do wrong. The proverbial crap hit the fan. My soon to be ex-wife started yelling at the counselor and wanted to know why she was attacking her, but we are there so she can fix me. After a few minutes of back and forth, my soon to be ex-wife stormed out crying. The counselor told me that my soon to be ex-wife has a deep hatred for me and I don't think this marriage can be salvaged. Basically, my response was, yep and nope. I informed the counselor that I appreciate her time and we won't be back. She offered me individual counseling. I informed her that I probably would in the future and proceeded to tell her about the taboo topic. Needless to say, it didn't surprise her and confirmed her suspicion. Needless to say, the entire trip back to the house was about what a quack the therapist was. I basically been on autopilot when about the house. I refer to it as the house because it isn't a home anymore. I've moved into the spare bedroom. As far as I'm concerned, I may be married, but I no longer have a wife. If she didn't need good medical insurance coverage, she would still be on the hunt. I don't need to track down the T to get the whole story. I live in a small community of less than 900 people. I commute to work in a bigger city daily. Monday of this week, while at the only grocery store in the community, guess who ran into my soon-to-be ex-wife? None other than the blind date guy. Small towns, right? It was bound to happen. I was at the end of the aisle when he walked up to her. He is a small guy maybe 5'9", and 150 pounds. She had her back to me and didn't realize where I was. He asked her out again, right in front of me. She did decline, though. That's when I walked up. I asked him if he was the guy she went out with about two months ago. He asked, what's it to me? I backed him up against the shelves and told him that I'd been her husband for 19 years. I thought he was going to soil himself. I'm 6'2", and 250 pounds and muscular. 
She tried to get me to back off. I growled at her to shut up. She just better listen. Immediately, she started crying. He told me that he was told she was single and begged for me to not kill him. I asked if they screwed. He swallowed hard and said yes. She cried harder. I told him to never let me see him again. He apologized for everything and basically ran out of the store. Her affair partner outed her by being in the wrong place at exactly the perfect time. If it hadn't been him, I would have eventually ran into T to get the story. Needless to say, most of the time I'm on autopilot. It's as if all emotion is gone. I have to fake happiness while I'm with my children. I don't know if it is an emotional self-defense mechanism to keep things from falling further apart. I know I should be in some kind of distress over this. One day it's going to hit hard. I no longer trust the things I know to be true. Do my children really love me? Oh, do they love the things I give them? Do my parents? Do they only love the fact that I got good grades in school? Never got into trouble? Always had good paying jobs? The only thing I'm certain of is I can't stay in this sham of a marriage. I get up, go to work, barely eat or sleep. The only people I've told about this are strangers on the internet. I have no one to talk to about this. I go from one day to the next pretending I'm normal. Maybe my soon-to-be ex-wife was right. The therapist does need to fix me. First reaction from the community. A. Ethan B. says, Mate, go to the therapist for yourself. The process of divorce is going to get hard and trust me, it will be helpful. Even if asking advice on how to minimize the men pact on your children. I couldn't stay in a marriage like you described either. Seek a lawyer ASAP and get divorced moving. Once you're clear of this entitled selfish woman, the better. It's clear she cares nothing for you and just wants your financial support. The way she behaved in counseling and then continued trickle truth? Unbelievable. Emergency ad 3355 chimes in. This is a really a mess. Get that attorney and get the divorce started. You have all the evidence you need. At some time in her life, she will have to grow up and take care of herself. You need to take care of yourself first. Character Head Note 90 says, The insurance situation has you in a tight pinch regarding a clean separation from your soon-to-be ex-wife because it represents having a healthy mother for your children. This alone complicates matters and the desperation will continue to be intense. Not only will this require legal advice, but clinical counseling as you navigate a tirade of challenges. Tough times are going to get tougher, so I can only hope that you stay enraged and let that drive you forward. On to the next story. Was cheated on while shopping for a wedding ring. Me, 22 male, and my girlfriend, 21 female, cheated on me while I was shopping for a ring. Background, me and my girlfriend have been together for around four years. I thought she loved me as much as I loved her and worked so hard to be able to afford a beautiful ring despite my crappy job. We were also looking for an apartment to start living together and with my salary, it is tight. Last week I was really thinking about our future and decided to start looking for a ring. I couldn't afford something too expensive, but I was using some of my bank money. I found the perfect ring that I know she would love that fits my budget. The store the ring was sold at was quite far, so I was planning on going next Sunday, but now I'm not sure of what to do. A few days ago, I went to my girlfriend's house to find my girlfriend on the couch with some random guy. After he left, I asked her who that man was, and she said he was just a friend. I was suspicious, so I kept an eye out. Two days ago, I went there again to give her dinner. I walked in the door of my girlfriend hooking up with the random guy, who I didn't even know his name. I freaked out and demanded him to leave. I went ballistic and she had no explanation. I stormed off. These past two days, I've only gotten texts from her families with apologies. She's at least sends me 20 messages a day apologizing. What should I do? Azalis has a quick, easy response. Go no contact and forget that trash. Jay Rossetti 103 chimes in. Do not buy the ring, dude. She obviously doesn't respect you or your relationship. And that's not the girl for you. Then my man, she's out there. It's just not this one. Alternative Wing 922 says, Don't marry her. She lied to your face the first time, and then you actually caught her the second. You marry her, she's going to cheat on you again. She just showed you she's untrustworthy and disloyal. Her family is texting you just to save face. She's texting you because she messed up and knows it. Go no contact and find a girl that deserves that ring on her finger. Miata Rick has an easy response. Better to find out now than after giving her a ring she doesn't deserve. I think you can answer your own question of what to do. Moving on. Found pictures of my wife having sex with other men on a sub taken in the last five years. Recently, 
I was putting up Christmas decorations, went to the attic for more, and when I opened a box with more decorations, a USB was tucked under a small Santa Claus figurine. At first, I thought maybe it was something I had left there. When I put it in the laptop, there were pictures of my wife with other men, some very explicit with them doing things to her that made me sick to see. I was so upset. I went to my primary doctor and had him test me for STDs. I made a copy and saw a lawyer not in my town, says ours is a small one. Not sure what I should do now. My daughter is 8, my son is 10. My attorney told me not to move out yet, and he will try to identify the men involved. Now devastated and my world is upside down. Our first response comes from 33 say what 33. She'll beg you to let her back. It was a mistake. Really? The cameraman was a mistake? Ask her how much they paid her. Keep asking until she tells you the truth. Ask what websites this video was posted on. Tell her to find out or she'll never see the kids. Who are the guys? Are they in her phone? You need her phone before you ask this. How many times does she do this? This wasn't her first escapade. Where are the other USB drives? Get what you want custody wise as you'd hate to see her mom and dad's face if they saw it. Never suggest you put it on the internet, as that's illegal. What SCDs did you get? Save the videos. Have her stay away. If she can't do that, she's on the couch, not you. Lots of crocodile tears. If she threatens suicide, call her bluff. If you ever say that again, I'll immediately call my one and your family. Getting locked up for 72 sucks. If you get out in 72. Record her if possible threatening suicide. You'll need evidence. What industry does he work in? Dude, stay super chill. Never lose your cool. Settle fast and get what you want. I don't think she wants to explain that video to a judge. Mrs. Jingles0729 says, So sorry, OP. Is it really matter who they are? You didn't exchange wedding vows with them. This lawyer sounds not so great. Did he tell you your options and what your post-divorce financials will look like? Do you want to keep the house? If so, what will it take to buy her out? If you want to move, get a market assessment before telling her your buyout price. Are you in an at-fault state? Pull the trigger and file so you can start your healing process. Leave the house and stay as busy as much as possible. Hit the gym, take the kid to the movies, do anything that's at home and be sad. Deployed, cheated on, caught by mom. Well, as the title says, it's the movie Dear John, but in real life and without the letter. Instead, a text message from a mom with a modern day screenshot. I'm 20, male, who's been dating this girl, 19 female, for five years. We dated all throughout high school and continued to do so after high school. I ended up joining the military after graduating, and we stayed together throughout the ordeal. I came back home for a bit, left and checked into my unit, and almost immediately got set on a deployment. Communication has been spotty at times, and the internet isn't always the best, so keeping up with my girlfriend and talking to her all the time has been challenging. I received a message, however, from my mom earlier today, asking if I knew where my girlfriend was. I opened the message, which contained a screenshot of my former girlfriend's Instagram story of her in a bed watching Netflix. My mother is super low-key on Instagram and does not post often. She usually only uses it to check up on my Instagram and see what I am doing. Well, this ended up being a good thing for me because... She was so low-key that when my ex-girlfriend hid her story from me, she forgot to also hide it from my mother. At first, I thought it was normal, dark-roomed Netflix that all these girls loved to post until I realized it was my good friend's bedroom. It didn't take much of anything for me to realize what had probably happened or has been happening for a while since I've been gone. But like many people on here, I would have never guessed it would have happened to me. I didn't question either of them and instead I played it with one of my best friends to please tell the truth about what had been happening while I was gone and he eventually caved after I called him on FaceTime, crying and pleading to him for the truth. I'm sickened, heartbroken and distraught at the discovery and the fact that people who I consider to be my friends and would have my back betrayed me. For all my fellow brothers and sisters out there that don't get to see their significant other often, at least have your mother follow your significant other, it might save you the heartache. Our closing response comes from character Hippo90. I don't know if you missed the announcement, but people in the military have a higher percentage of failed relationships than the national norm. We were often advised prior to an extended deployment to sever ties with uncommitted unions, as they will likely not be there when we return. And during my years of service, I witnessed so many dear Johns, divorces, and false pregnancies almost on a daily basis. I know your feelings, but focus on the mission. Good luck.